I hope you guys don't publish this marketing on the website because we'll burn you over it. Mm. Okay, okay. Thermaltake's version of Computex was hosted online this time with physical gatherings impossible. And this year, the product that Thermaltake showcased was incompetence. It was showcasing incompetence of design of its product management and marketing department, and specifically its repeat inability as exhibited trade show after trade show to listen to both customer and media feedback, especially media feedback provided in private to give the company time to improve. We've been trying to tell Thermaltake what it needs to do to improve its brand credibility and its reputation at every single show for no fewer than six years at this point. And it seems like all of that has fallen on deaf ears. Fortunately, we have now completely lost all faith in Thermaltake's ability to take feedback and improve upon itself, and so we're just gonna put it all out there publicly. Maybe that'll work, because really what we want is Thermaltake to get from product classifications of almost really good to actually really good. It's so damn close, and that's the reason it's so frustrating, is Thermaltake just throws it all away at the end of the game. Before that, this video is brought to you by Thermal Grizzly's Conductonaut Liquid Metal. Conductonaut is what we've used in all of our liquid metal and D-Lit thermal tests, capable of dropping CPU thermals significantly when replacing the stock thermal interface. Lower CPU thermals don't just allow better overclocks, but also lower noise levels because the transfer efficiency is increased. The mix of gallium and indium makes for a thermal conductivity of 73 watts per meter Kelvin, outclassing traditional pastes significantly. Learn more at the link in the description below. This video is going to be pretty ranty, talking about some of the many issues we've had with Thermaltake over the years, especially with its marketing. Thermaltake has some really skilled, good people at the company who do good work, who want to make good products, and for one reason or another, it just doesn't quite make it far enough up the chain to actually exact change and push through and make something truly competitive. Thermaltake has had things like the Core P3, that wall-mountable case. We'll put a shot of it on the screen. That's a really good case. If they could just consistently do that, they'd be in a good spot. But instead, Thermaltake has a history of, well, there was the Thermal Fake controversy from many years ago, but aside from that, it has a history of putting out products like Level 20 RS or the G20 or G21, whatever it was called, as two good examples of cases that were almost good, at least in terms of thermals and performance and noise, and then they just toss it all away because they refuse to listen to the fact that you shouldn't actually have three layers of mesh all triple stacked blocking the holes in the subsequent layers of mesh behind each one. But that's only one small part of the many issues with Thermaltake. The quick recap of Thermaltake's new lineup of products is that there are a lot of cases. Thermaltake typically only shows the bad ones. At its trade shows, they literally hide the good ones in a dark corner with a curtain around it. Not even joking, that's where they go. And they also have some new power supplies. They have some new gaming peripherals. They have some liquid coolers that range from useful to uh, over-marketed, misleading wastes of time at the, the bad end, if that wasn't obvious. And we were very critical of Thermaltake's designs in our meeting this time. We always are, but this one was different because since it was hosted online, there were higher up people in the company on the call that we were on with Thermaltake. And we could see those names in the, the meeting room. So hopefully this didn't fall on deaf ears again, but we've been through this so many times with Thermal Take now, it's, it's really, it's getting hard to take Thermal Take seriously because it's a company that the right people that we interface with, and you know who you are, there are many of you, want to, to do a good job and make a good product and do a great job of representing the products that they're given or have to deal with from wherever it comes from in the company. But unfortunately, the the people who, whoever it is who control the change, they're not letting enough of it come down to improve brand credibility, the key word there, and brand perceived quality. Thermaltake has finally gotten away from its thermal fake controversy, as our viewers like to comment, and it's parted ways with that subset of its history. But the company's really going to have to get into try-hard mode to fully recover and build a better reputation than just cheap stuff. And it needs it needs more effort. One of the things we've been pushing on Thermaltake's Taiwan headquarters, which headed up the call, is that it needs to stop treating press like we're easily manipulated consumers. So this is what we said to the Taiwan headquarters when we started the call, was we're not trying, I'm not trying to be a dick, but I'm just being real with you. This is how these, 
marketing words you're using, they're not going to work on us. We're not stupid. And the more ammunition that thermal take gives me in terms of things like a couple of examples, not understanding math or, or not understanding uh, as another example how thermal cameras work despite thermal being in the name of the company. And they try to slide these by us, but it doesn't work and then they push it onto the consumers. And maybe it works there and that's really the disappointing part. But let's start with some of the misleading bullshit that Thermaltake tried to slide by us this time. First up, the Thermaltake Flow RC. This is a special one. So this is Thermaltake's new Flow RC cooler. It's the one that we had the most issues with. Principally, Thermaltake's marketing a product on the merits of cooling down the memory, which is completely irrelevant. It's fine to market it for looking cool or being interesting. But making bold claims like increasing performance or increasing lifespan is largely meaningless. RAM is not a component that gets very hot and it doesn't need much active cooling and it certainly doesn't need water cooling. Water cooling might look cool and that's fine. Regardless though, our bigger issue was that Thermal Take made some claims which are horribly misleading. Thermal Take made a big deal about being quote 20% lower than completely natural convection cooling claiming that this ensures, quote, better stability and longer lifespan. Most of that statement is debatable, but there's one part that's just straight up mathematically wrong, and that's the percentage. Temperature measured on a scale like Celsius or Fahrenheit is an arbitrary, human-friendly representation of the average kinetic energy of particles in a system. It's a representation of thermal energy. 20% here isn't really 20% of the base unit of energy. So you could maybe do a percentage change against the actual unit of energy, but no one understands that or wants it. Here's a clip from our call to give you some perspective. What does 20% lower mean to you guys? How is that number calculated? Okay, here's uh, the numbers. Uh, we calculated the number based oh. on the, the memory we're doing the overclocking. We're doing so the is it? Yeah, so 49 okay. to 39. Okay, so you're doing, the math you guys are doing is 39 minus 49 divided by 49, right? Right, right. The 10 degrees. So new, new minus old, new minus old divided by old. You is this a delta T over ambient number, or is this just the actual? Exactly. This is the exactly. actual temperature. Yeah. Okay, you can't you can't do math that way with temperature because if we convert 49 and 39 to Kelvin, which is still the same amount of energy, the percentage scale will change. So you're going to go from a 20 percent difference to, uh, off the top of my head, it's going to be a couple percent. Like this is. Temperature is an arbitrary scale that, unless it's Kelvin, does not start at zero, right? Oh, right. So, like, let me let me prove my point. So, 49 Celsius to Kelvin is going to be 322, and 39 Celsius to Kelvin is 312. So, if we do 312 minus 322 divided by 322, it's actually a 3.1 percent difference, not a 20 percent difference. Okay. Okay, this is based on your... You understand what I mean? Cause I know, I know, I know, I know your theory, yeah. Because, I mean, it's not a theory, it's like math. But again, the biggest thing is that it just doesn't matter. Cooling the memory is, is functionally irrelevant, at least once you get to this point of cooling. It's not even about, it's better to have cooler, because why wouldn't you? It's always better to have cooler. It's about... It, it actually it isn't. It isn't always better to ha have cooler because you're now putting this big bulky thing on your system and in the middle of your system it's going to be proprietary and going to be difficult to get replacements for in the future once it inevitably fails and they stop making it and now you end up with something that is difficult to wrangle just to install and maybe is debatable for how it looks to begin with just because now you've got all these tubes routing around all over the place and plus the socket to memory distancing isn't the same on every motherboard. It complicates things. So that's really the main problem here. If they want to market that it looks whatever different, fine. But they didn't even have any numbers saying look at how much higher it overclocks with water cooling because frankly, I don't think Thermal Take has anyone who works there who knows how to overclock memory. I think they probably outsource it. But the next one is new cases. Thermal Take and its most promising product was the Tower 100 this year. This follows up the Tower 900 from many years ago. And actually, Thermal Mike, as he's known, at Thermal Take did a fantastic job with a Tower 900 mod many years ago where it was a Donkey Kong cabinet. And that was probably one of the best representations of that case. The Tower 900 is a legitimately unique case from Thermal Take, much like the Core P3 is. And to that end, this is one of the products that is the most promising from Thermaltake from its event this time, the Tower 100 that is. 
The Tower 100 is a mini ITX variant of the already released Tower 900. We like its concept, but it's fatally flawed in several ways. The case is glass walled and has some ventilation on the lower sides, along with a pop out mesh plate on the top that looks somewhat promising, except for the huge amounts of plastic once again and the multiple layers of mesh. But We've been over that. Fans installed in the demo system include a fan on the bottom and a fan on the top. Since we weren't there in person, it looks like a 120 mil, but it could be a 140. Either way, though, the support is for one radiator at the top, either 120, 140, we need to look into it further, and none on the bottom for radiators. So water cooling support is limited to a single radiator, closed loop liquid cooler. So you're either cooling the CPU or the GPU with liquid, but not both. Thermal Take decided to use an RX 5700 XE reference card for its demo solution, smashed right up against the glass while taking both available PCIe slots for the case. The GPU has absolutely zero source of external air with this configuration. And worse still, Thermal Take's demo system is set up so incompetently as to use a bottom exhaust fan and a top exhaust fan with no intake anywhere in sight. There's no direct intake into the case. This glass walled abomination is set up in a full negative pressure configuration, except without any sufficient sources of air intake. That's the key dividing factor. Negative pressure can work really well, but not like this. Air will find its way through those tiny vents in the bottom, at least whatever amount it can with all the layers of mesh in between. But because of the pressure created by two exhaust fans that are going to overpower the GPU fan, it's unlikely that the GPU ever breathes anyway. Also, by the way, that reference card is already thermally tortured. It's likely that the CPU will also run hot under a 120 or a 140 mil CLC, especially one that's got limited intake. Further still, Thermal Take's representative was hesitant to show us the bottom of the case when we asked, but eventually tilted it to show off a dust filter. Our question was simple. How does that 120 or 140 fan on the bottom breathe? If it were intake, we asked, where would it pull its air from? The answer we found is that it'll pull air from the fourth dimension. We'll put some graphics on the screen to help illustrate this because you probably haven't heard of this before. Thermal Take is using a time cube, which it is deploying aside a tesseract to access a previously unexplored universe within its bag of holding, whereupon air can teleport into existence. The bottom of the case is currently steel with a dust filter on it, just in case the steel you're using is the magic kind that transcends physics and warps things into existence like some kind of warp gate. Shout out to Artosis. We're told that they hope to drill holes into this later and make it properly ventilated. And the problem is that this doesn't actually fix the problem. It in fact exposes a whole new host of problems. Now you have a power supply fan facing down rather than in. And right now, the power supply fan faces in in the demo system because it can't breathe otherwise because it's a steel bottom. So what happens? Well, there's a fan that sits above it in the middle of the case, and it blows air straight into the power supply. That's all well and good. It exhausts out the power supply. There's at least a direct path somewhere that the fan's doing something. Might not be the best thing to do, but it's doing something. The, <laughs> when Thermal Take tried to defend its design, by saying, well, we're going to drill holes into the bottom. What they didn't really seem to quite realize is that it then exposed a new incompetence of design. Because with the power supply fan facing down, now the fan that's in the middle of the case actually can't send air anywhere. So if it's exhaust, it's now blowing into a steel wall, the underside of the power supply, rather than into a fan, where it can at least be pulled out of the system. And if it's intake, it's got to figure out how to pull the air through the steel. See again, interdimensional pocket fused with a tesseract and a time cube. That's how this all works, we think. We're not sure, but based on our extreme experience reviewing cases, that is the only way that this fan will do anything, because otherwise it's just smashed up against steel or glass. And if you're thinking about the small ventilation on the bottom sides of the case, those uh, black ventilated strips on the sides, well, bad news there too, because the fan is extremely far away from those. At that point, you're dealing with now a uh, stretching out whatever static pressure performance of the fan you have several inches to try and hope that you can somehow magically pull air through a multi-filtered hole in the case that's very far away and also very small. This entire concept is cool, but it's horribly executed. And that's what's so frustrating about thermal take year after year. Thermal Take has made a name for itself in our reviews over the years by building products that are almost good. 
then shoving its fingers in its ears and ignoring what everyone says. That includes the customers and the media. This is all in favor of doing the least amount of effort to make a sellable product, just the baseline effort. And uh, Thermal Takes is not willing to push back release dates in favor of design improvements. It has to learn to do that. Other companies in the space, small ones even, like Silverstone, set a fantastic example of pushing back release dates when they're not happy with where a product is today. Sometimes you have to decide you're going to lose. You're not going to be the first one to market with the idea, but you're going to be the one with the best idea to market or the best implementation of that idea to market. Instead, Thermal Take is often the first and also not very good. So what happens is it's competitors and Thermal Take, damn it, I hope you're listening because this is what's happening. The competitors of Thermal Take then see that idea come out. They go, huh, well, 95% of this is a joke. Let's spend an hour on a conference call making fun of it. But hey, that 5%, that's new. That's really good. We can do that and we can take it and we can make it better. And that's exactly what a product manager's job is. If they haven't come up with an idea, their job is to go take one from somewhere else and improve upon it. And for the most part, that's fine. But sometimes it's a bit egregious, like the Fantex Leanne Lee ripoff, for example. Other times, though, you start to see bits and pieces of ideas formed together into one case, and now it's got a little bit of Fantex, a bit of Silverstone, a bit of Corsair, and you have something really unique, cool, and interesting that does new stuff. Thermal Take is the one that's providing those ideas that get stolen and shoved into something else, rather than executing them properly and making something that's genuinely really good. There are a few exceptions to this. Again, the Core P3 is a fantastic case, and we're happy to work with it, happy to use it in our test benches when we need a vertical bench. It's wall-mountable, all this cool stuff, very simple case, and it works well. There's also... Oh, I had to think about it for a second. Those complete water cooling kits that are just a box of water cooling parts that they ship and it's like, here's baby's first open loop. That's pretty cool too. We actually like those kits of water cooling parts. Thermal Take does a good job there of getting something prepared for people who've never worked with it before. The RAM is fine. It's something that we run ads for. We don't mind it. It's gotten onto a lot of QVLs qualified vendor lists. So it's actually getting wider support in the ecosystem and ultimately the memory chips come from someone else and it's kind of hard to screw that up. So once it's on QVLs, once they have the memory chips, all you're really talking about is pricing, the exact specification source from the memory supplier, and then the looks. And so we don't really have a problem with the RAM and they haven't screwed it up. It's fine. Now that said, RAM is a commodity. This is something that every memory vendor will tell you that they agree with. It's a commodity and people don't really put a whole lot of weight into what RAM they choose, aside from hitting some baseline specification and the right price, and looks come before all of that in most cases, whether or not that's you, that's how it mostly works. So having a good kit of RAM, a pre-assembled water cooling kit, and one, maybe two or three cases in recent history that are good, like Tower 900 would be another one, that's not really enough. We need to see more from Thermal Take here. They have so many good core ideas and they just fail to execute. The Tower 100 should cost $80. That's its expected price, 90 for the white version, and it'll come out at the end of August. We'll see if they fail to make any of the improvements we've requested. They probably will because it's been pretty deep at this point and they'd basically have to replace the glass panel near the GPU with something else. We want to reiterate that this is a really interesting case, nearly and Thermal Take could make the changes necessary to improve it. But we don't think their HQ team will push it back. We think that they have too much pride and they're probably more invested in rushing it through than listening. And in all the responses that HQ gave to all of our feedback, it always just sounded like the points weren't landing. If anybody from Thermal Take management is in the, the meeting, but I hope they're listening because like, okay. I've been I've had this same conversation every year for like six years. Thermal Take's next almost good case that it announced this week was the 300 TG ARGB divider, which is definitely a design that other manufacturers will soon copy. In fact, we sort of saw this with CyberPower at CES this year, where we said that the CyberPower Amethyst case was the one we expect case manufacturers likely to adapt, as the Amethyst combined steel and glass into a single split panel. At the time, though, CyberPower was effectively gluing the steel to the glass, whereas Thermal Take is going with a split panel approach. So a couple of things here. This divider, this is what we're talking about, where it's a really cool idea, and Thermal Take should have kept its mouth shut until it had it better figured out. There are a lot of problems with the execution that we'll go through in a moment. 
But what Thermal Take should have probably done is released a line of them, all the same chassis, all the same tooling with different side panels. And they could have done some really cool things with that split panel design, because now you can start cutting out holes in the glass and the metal and put a screw in the steel, in the metal, get two screws in there, and you could potentially get a fan mounted that cuts into where the glass would have been. Now you have a side intake fan that you can potentially, if done properly, power with pin to pad contact rather than a cable, being one of the first cases to re-add a side intake fan that isn't ugly, that doesn't have an annoying cable that stretches to the motherboard. Other things they could have done would include rotating the damn glass so that you can see the computer with the glass instead of the big empty space at the front of the computer. The glass should be from bottom left to top right with the third point in the top left thus revealing most of the actual components in the system. As it stands now, the glass basically reveals a giant empty compartment in the front of the chassis, which will be even more empty if the user doesn't add the optional fans to the side for intake. It's just oriented the wrong way. You'll see just a black steel wall, and that's it. As for the rest, the front panel of the chassis was boasted to us as having ventilation, in big air quotes there, which we genuinely didn't see for the first time in the video demonstration. The ventilation looks a couple millimeters wide. It's making a worse version of the mistake Cooler Master made with its original H500P, the non-mesh one. The case could be a decent performer if Thermal Take fully closed the front and committed to side intake. But then you wouldn't have three RGB fans behind a glass panel, which is a design four or five years old at this point that Thermal Take seems committed to. We try not to be too critical of demo systems since they aren't representative of stock configurations, but it's hard to overlook flaws in assembly that make a company look utterly vexed as to how to build a computer. They are disconnected from their audience. The demo system takes air in from the front, presumably, and then it immediately spits it out the side because those side panel fans are set up as exhaust. That's probably not the stock configuration. In fact, it isn't. The stock configuration is three front only. But what this means is that Thermal Take has no idea what it's doing when it builds a system. That means that none of the air ever actually makes it into the computer. It's entering and it's taking a 90 degree turn and leaving before getting to the motherboard. This could be actually good with side intake, but then you'd need to block the front or set up front intake in the front to prevent air from escaping there. The case concept is good to do something different with the side panel but everything else about it is poorly executed, and the demo system is too. We fully expect a more capable company to rip this idea off and execute it properly before Thermal Take fixes its own execution, and very sadly, tragically for Thermal Take, that company, whoever it ends up being, won't be accused of being thermal fake, and they won't be accused of stealing ideas, because this one didn't get far enough to have that privilege of it seeming like, like it was thieved from Thermal Take before really properly being executed. Thermal Take is the company, whether it's fair or not, that has now this ghost following it, this demon of being a knockoff company. And these products aren't going to help it because what's going to happen? Thermal Take, again, let's listen, listen this time, please. What's going to happen is Thermal Take releases these versions of these cases. They do okay in the market, poorly to okay. Thermal Take fixes some of the things and iterates on them. Maybe not thermally, but at least flips the panel around, iterates on the design some way. That case ends up, whatever it is, being actually kind of good and getting some recommendations. Here's the problem. In the time from now and the next iteration of its case, that idea will be executed better by someone else. And you know what will happen? Thermal Take will again be called Thermal Fake. They'll be accused of stealing an idea that they put to market. And that's because they didn't do it well enough the first time, so no one ever really notices it. They don't catch on. Finally, Thermal Take's most interesting development was its new Tough Fan, which looks an awful lot like a Nidex solution and is meant to take on Noctua head to head. The Tough Fan 12 runs at 500 to 2000 RPM. It's non RGB, and we praise it for that. And it markets a quote 58 CFM. We asked how Thermal Take measures its flow rate, but we were not provided with a response or documentation. The bearing is a hydraulic bearing, the motor is four phase, and it's supposed to be available for $20 within weeks of this announcement for the 120 mil version or by mid Q3 for 140 mil. This is definitely Thermal Take's most promising product line shown here. It'll be included with coolers at a later date, but we don't have further details on that. So that's really it then. It's time for Thermal Take to learn. Uh, I'll probably have a conclusion thing on the timestamps, but spoiler alert, 
I'm not going to try and recap all of the rage that I just unbottled into the camera because that was a lot of rage. And it's the problem is, again, it's, it's not even just, I don't know. I want to say I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. But as I started writing this and really getting into the script, I was realizing, actually, I'm kind of mad. Kind of mad. And it's because it's been years that Thermal Take's been doing the same damn thing where they get so close to having something really good and then they just let it slip. So please, please Thermal Take, the only reason I'm doing this is because I want you, the company, to improve. I want Thermal Take to get better because the people who work there have good ideas and execute well. Thermal Take's US headquarters has some of the best PC builders in the industry. Thermal Mike, again, as an example, does most of their show systems for Computex or CES when they happen. And when he does those, they're good. But it takes more than one person building demo systems to make a good product and a good company. And uh, whoever hears this, hopefully, they can make the right decisions to start improving things. And the first decision should be, we need to start delaying products when they're not there yet. And the second one should be, we need to start listening to people. Because it's not the same industry it was in the 90s, when people thought that the company was called Thermal Taki. It's a much different industry now. So that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more to support this type of content. Go to store.gamersnexus.net or patreon.com slash gamersnexus. I'll see you all next time.